Hi, this is Namit from Informatica Support and in this video we will be discussing about the integration service architecture and various configurations that can be done for this service. The agenda for this presentation is as follows. We will first try to create a new integration service from the admin console and we will also explore the ways uh, in which the integration service can be created. Then we will do an overview for the integration service architecture and the various thread pools that are there in, in the integration service. At the end, we will go through some of the important integration service configurations. The integration service is one of the many services that can be configured in an Informatica domain. We can configure a new integration service from the admin console or from the command line utility using the command shown here. There are two primary prerequisites to create a new integration service. We have to have a repository service to associate it to and we have to have a valid license file. So this is how you can create a new integration service from the admin console. We have to give the integration service a name. We have to select a valid license file and we have to select a valid node. After that we have to associate it to a valid repository service that should be up and running. We have to select the data moment mode that can be ASCII or Unicode. And after that we have to select a valid code page in this box. After doing this the integration service should be up and running. If not we can enable the service from this button over the top right hand corner. So in this case the service initialization is failing. We can click on view logs to see what went wrong. In the logs we can see that there is a code page mismatch that is preventing it from getting initialized. This is one of the most common issues that we face while trying to bring up the integration service. To resolve this issue, we have to go to the processes tab for the integration service and select a valid code page for the integration service process. So after selecting the valid code page, the integration service process should be up and running. The overview of the integration service architecture. The integration service is always configured to run in an active active mode. By that we mean that if you have configured the integration service to run on two nodes, the IS will always be active that is running on both the nodes. The integration service is built on top of what we call a server framework which is an Informatica's proprietary SDK that is used to build IS and other equivalent services. The primary job of the integration service is to run a logical entity that we call a workflow. IS is responsible for handling and responding to a client's request. The client in this case could be a workflow manager or PMCMD. The integration service process also contains a load balancer which is an integral part of the integration service architecture. In this slide you can see the top level architecture of the integration service and it interfacing with other Informatica services. In this diagram there are two IS which denotes uh, IS running over a grid. The link denotes the TCP level connections made by the integration service with other Informatica services. When a user starts a workflow or a session, the request is accepted by the LM or a load manager thread running inside the integration service process, which is then passed by other worker threads in the integration service and a relevant request is made to the RS or repository service to fetch the task details. 
All the execution blueprints, which is a workflow, is saved in the repository service. The workflow is then fetched from the repository service and is parsed by the integration service, which can then spawn PMDTM or any of the tasks that can be configured in a workflow manager, like a command tasks that can be used to execute external Linux or Windows scripts. Apart from that, there are file watch events and other event based triggers and logical flows through which we can formulate a if else structure as shown here. This logical entity is called a workflow and is run by the integration service process. The integration service has dedicated thread pools for all the tasks that it is supposed to perform. Basically, there are four different types of thread pools as shown here. All of these can be tweaked and set to a suitable limit to tune these parameters. It is always advisable to contact the global customer support to validate the changes before they are applied. Now we will have a look at various integration service properties that can be set for the ICE process. If you select the integration service process in the admin console, you will see four tabs, properties, associated repository, processes and permissions. The properties tab contains the configurable service options. You can add a backup node You can change the data moment mode from ASCII to Unicode after the IS surface process was created. You can change the log level of the process from info to verbose. You can change the resil resiliency timeout. You can also change the log format from UTF to binary. We can also change the operating mode from normal to safe mode to debug the IS process startup issues. After setting the uh, operating mode to safe, the integration service process will not try to fetch the workflows from the repository service at the time of initialization. A HTTP proxy can be configured on the IS service from process from this window. There are two ways to set custom properties for the integration service. The custom properties are the runtime configurations that can be applied to the IS to configure parameters which are not available or shown in the admin console. Custom property can be applied in the properties tab as shown here and from the processes tab for each node as shown here. If you want your integration service to run under a different set of environment variables, that can be done from the processes tab. Just select the node and then select the edit environment variables property and click on new. And from here, you can create any new environment variables and the integration service while coming up will pick this environment variable and pass it along to the other processes that it spawns. You can also use the permissions tab to list the user and group permissions which are related to this particular integration service process. So this brings us to the end of this presentation and the key takeaways from this presentation are that the integration service process is an integral part of power center and it is responsible for spawning PMDTM process. It is also responsible for parsing and understanding the workflow logic that is designed in a workflow monitor. It can be configured to run in a grid environment for load balancing. If you have any feedback or queries, please feel free to contact us on one of these social networking websites. Thank you.